Hello and welcome to 8 Bits, a show where we search for 8 different bits in games from across all eras. These bits can be easter eggs, secrets, or just sweet little details that we thought were rad as flip. Wait, that's John's thing. Um, cool as heck. Anyway, we've got a ton of these waiting in the wings, so it's time to trot out 8 more. Let's begin. Donkey Kong Country Returns may not be talked about much anymore thanks to Tropical Freeze really showing what Retro Studios could do with the Big Ape, but it was a start and a fine game in its own right, though many at the time found the music to be pretty forgettable, especially compared to the previous work of David Wise and his return in Tropical Freeze. It didn't help that the new antagonist, the Tiki Tak Tribe, were considered a downgrade from the Kremlings as well. And yet, there's a small detail involving both the tribe and music that shows Retro did put some thought into them. The Tiki Tech tribe are all based on musical instruments, and sure enough, their individual sounds can be heard during the boss fights. It's the same boss fight tune the entire game, but with Kalimba, you can hear the Mabira, Maracas with the Maraca Gang, A gong for gong -o. A banjo with banjo bottom. A pan flute for wacky pipes. A xylophone with xylobone. and the accordion for accordion. The only exception is the final boss, Tiki Tong, and there's a reason for that as the other members of the tribe were using their music to hypnotize the animals of DK Island. Tiki Tong is doing no such thing and fighting DK himself, so the song only features a rumbling echo to disarm the player. Of course it doesn't work, and Tiki Tong ends up getting mooned by DK. There's nothing more appropriate for 8-bit trivia than, well, an 8-bit easter egg. And it's nothing too major, but the Kirby series certainly loves its callbacks. In this case, it's Kirby Planet Robobot getting the spotlight, specifically the sound test. Typically, when starting it up, there's a 2D image of Kirby sleeping until starting a song. Then he stands up to enjoy the music while winking occasionally. However, every so often, instead of this Kirby, 8-Bit Kirby from Kirby's Adventure appears instead. He hangs out, kinda nodding off with the music off, but once it begins, he starts dancing. Nothing quite like a fun blast to the past. There are no secrets quite like Mario's secrets, and Super Mario 3D World has its fair share. But one in particular really takes the world portion of the game to the next level, as it throws back to the original Super Mario World. If you enter the final boss level against Bowser, you can find his destroyed car off to the side. It seems innocuous enough, but have you ever tried hitting it? Most of the time it'll beep or play Bowser's laugh, though if you keep at it... There are other sound effects that play. Recognize that? It's the power-up sound from Mario World. And there are others too. Peach calling for help. Going down a pipe. The opening notes of the castle theme. The save menu. And the door opening. I guess there's even more to hear, but they don't appear too often. Any attack will do, but the Tanuki suit does seem to be the most efficient. God of War Ragnarok has only just released, and undoubtedly there are plenty of secrets to discover within. But one of the first we encountered was this bit of dialogue between Kratos and Mimir, his talkative companion. Anytime Kratos is doing something mundane, Mimir will talk to fill in the space and offer some characterization. As far as we can tell, it's all randomly triggered, but one of the sequences is this. Brother, I've heard my share of stories about your homeland, but I've also heard that you once fought in a tournament. I fought in many contests. But this particular one, I heard you did battle with beasts, scoundrels, princesses, the undead, automatons, and history's greatest musician. That's not... that's not true, is it? I would not speak of this. 
Fair enough, brother. You heard that right. Mimir asks if Kratos fought in a tournament that involved beasts, princesses, scoundrels, the undead, automatons, and history's greatest musician. He's talking about Mortal Kombat 9 from 2011, where he was a playable character in the PlayStation version. And sure enough, all those opponents are references to Mortal Kombat characters. The beasts are Baraka, Shiva, and Reptile. The princesses are Katana and Melina. The scoundrel is Kano. The undead is Scorpion. And the automatons are Sektor and Cyrax. But what about history's greatest musician? That would be the DLC character Rain, who is a reference to Prince. You know, Purple Rain? So it turns out that Mortal Kombat is canon to God of War. It's not as if anything major happens, as he was summoned mysteriously to the tournament and then returns upon defeating Shao Kahn. But it does make you wonder, does this mean that all of Kratos' cameos are canon? He did say he took part in many contests, so that would include PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, Shovel Knight, Soul Calibur, and Hot Shots Golf Out of Bounds. Huh. From the moment I played Sonic 3, I loved Knuckles. He was just so cool and constantly appeared as this thorn in Sonic's side throughout the game. By the time Sonic and Knuckles came out, I was blown away by the awesome box art, which still features one of the best logos of all time, and the ability to actually play as the Echidna. But it also featured the end to his story in this game, where he learns that he was tricked by Eggman all along and gets electrocuted for his trouble when trying to protect the Master Emerald. Weakened, he shows Sonic how to reach Sky Sanctuary and hopefully reach the Death Egg before it's too late. And normally he would be left on the button for the bridge, panting in exhaustion while Sonic goes through the level. But if you hang out just to the right of him and press down, he'll actually transition into a new animation. One where he starts pointing to the right, insisting that Sonic go on. I'm not going to pretend it's a major revelation, but it's still cool to see the partnership between Sonic and Knuckles forming, if only because Sonic is dawdling. Another fun small secret involves Kid Icarus Uprising. We all want to see this amazing game ported, but it really was designed to utilize as much of the 3DS's capabilities as possible, and that includes the Difficulty Cauldron. Before taking on any of the game's chapters, players can bet a number of hearts which increases the difficulty. It's harder, but the rewards are better if Pit survives. But did you know that you could tap the cauldron itself? It doesn't take long for the skull on it to get annoyed and eventually turn away. Keep tapping and he'll start peeping to see if you're still there. Keep going even longer and he'll come back to the front and look absolutely livid. At this point the animation repeats, but it shows that even cauldrons have feelings too. Somehow. By now, most Zelda fans know who Marin is. She's the sweet singer who dreams of seeing the sights beyond the island in Link's Awakening. The villagers love her, the animals love her, Link may even have a crush on her. However, she may not be as kind-hearted as we all believe. During the portion of the game where she follows Link around, it's still possible for him to attack Akuko. As soon as he does, Marin will shout out that he should stop hurting the poor thing. But if Link ignores her and keeps attacking, oh boy does the bloodlust come out. She gleefully laughs and insists he do it more, before declaring that she didn't mean it. So either she's secretly a sadist, or really wants to see Link get his comeuppance from the Kukos, and plays it off. Either way, it's fun to see another side of this island girl. Satoru Iwata will always be a beloved part of Nintendo with his many accomplishments in development and the way he involved himself in the community. But did you know that he had some game cameos as well? Two in fact, both of which are part of the WarioWare series. In the original WarioWare, after you first defeat Wario's set of introductory microgames, you can challenge it again to see how high your score can get. And every nine stages or so, a boss microgame appears. Beat the first one and Wario sits on his couch watching TV as robots scroll by saying, Whoa, I'm beat. Beat the second one and this time a lady in a towel scrolls on screen while Wario asks the player if they like TV. Beat the third boss stage and Iwata appears waving at Wario while saying thanks for playing. That feels pretty appropriate. His second cameo is in WarioWare Smooth Moves for the Wii during 9V and 18V set of minigames. In their story, the two fight over an old-school dual-screen Game & Watch that gets broken in half. 18V then goes to the game store to get it replaced, where a set of microgames get sent his way by a faceless shopkeeper. But if the player wins, then the shopkeeper's face is revealed to be Awada. He's even listed as shop manager Awada. Not a bad legacy to leave behind, is it? 
And with that, I want to thank you for watching this episode of 8-Bits. There's still so much trivia to share, so be on the lookout for the next episode, or feel free to offer up some secrets or easter eggs of your own in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to Good Vibes Gaming, hitting the like button, and ringing that bell. We also have a Patreon at patreon.com slash dvgaming with plenty of extra perks. Until next time, bye.